not like the South Sudanese uh, origin to also uh, stay here. Uh, I work for Nile Petroleum Corporation, which is a national frame of the Ministry of Petroleum. And I'm the founder of uh, Future Savers Network, which is based on environmental protection and preservation. And I am an environmental leader. Uh, tell me what is happening now in South Sudan with the floods. Well, uh, we know the country has been experiencing flooding for the last three years, starting from 2019, 2020, and 2021, which was very extensive last year. And many people have been displaced, about 35,000 people have been displaced, and more than 837 persons across the eight states of this country. Uh, and most of the worst affected are the Greater Afghanistan State, which is um, Jomle State, Unity State, and Afghanistan State. And this is the first time I mean, floats are coming so small that they feel that this year in 2021 the worst in the world. Is that true or is this true how worse the world can be Yes, according to the reports that we have been getting, uh, this is actually the worst of its kind in the last 60 years. I think the last time we had such flood was in the early 1960s. And for the last 60 years, the country has never experienced such flooding. So it was actually worse last year, more than 2019 and 2020. Yeah, so the flooding were very, very, very serious last year. It's uh, displacing many people. Is it correct to say that climate change is really affecting South Sudan? Yes, definitely. Uh, what we are facing actually is the impacts of climate change because we know one of the impacts or the effects or adverse effects of climate change is extreme weather conditions or extreme uh, rains. Or droughts, which we are actually facing in South Sudan. We are facing both rain, extreme rainfall, and also very harsh droughts the last, let's say, maybe a decade. Yeah, so it's actually climate change that is affecting us. Did you see in your daily life, uh, did you see a change in the patterns of the climate, the rain, and I don't know, your parents in their daily life? All the patterns are the same in place. Yeah, of course, we have actually felt, especially here in Juba, we heard a long time ago people talking about the climate of Juba as being moderate. It's not so hot, it's not so hot. But nowadays, actually, Juba has become hot. Uh, we have seen the pattern of rain changing. We actually had a period of nine months of rainfall in South Sudan, especially the, uh, the equatorial region. But now that one has reduced. Sometimes the rain is not sufficient. It may be very little. We used to receive, I think, uh, more than a thousand millimeters per year of rainfall, in which it has actually reduced now in our times. And the temperature has also increased. What can South Sudanese do to, to mitigate this effort for climate change? Well, South Sudan is a country, as we all know, the whole world knows that we are still affected by the conflict that is taking place. And that one actually makes the mitigation or adaptation measures very, very, you know, not that effective. Because already the country is actually among the, the undeveloped countries fighting and trying to obtain peace. And most of resources are actually going towards peace implementation, which also makes it a bit difficult for us to cope with this adaptation mechanism of climate change. Also, uh, as we know, we are not emitters. We are not emitting any carbon. Our emissions are very low, but we are actually being affected by what is taking place in the industrialized nations. And therefore, for us to be able also to mitigate or rather not mitigation but adaptation mechanism in our country. We need the climate financings to be implemented, which was agreed on in the COP26, that there is that money that has to be given to the underdeveloped nations 
so that they can actually grow their mechanism on adaptation. South Sudan as a country also have to put uh, resources in place to be able to, to cope with the effect of floods and it may actually be worse in the near. In this year, if we receive more rainfall, we could actually be submerged all of us all in the whole country because we are left with only two states that are not affected. And we know that the ground is still soft in the water. So in case of any heavy rains or in case of any overflow from Lake Victoria to this side, that means we can actually experience the worst more than last year because the ground is still not dry. So the country has to be uh, diligent enough to empower uh, or improve the meteorological department, which can give early warning. And there we have people to be evacuated to safer places before time. And they can also predict what happened actually in the future. So we need the other international communities also to help because there is already funding that is put in place to have these unemployment patients. So, and then when it's come to the country, we will be able to bring adaptations to other issues. It sounds like we need to face this progress, you know, so some facing some problems with security, many others. It's also done. You know, social and space is many problems. And now it's having another one that is uh, yeah. The state is strong enough to to, to answer this problem, to give an answer to this problem. Uh, well, as we know we have already been devastated by the ongoing, fight, uh, the ongoing conflict within the country. We have poor infrastructure in those affected areas. And with the climate change, it's actually a double work or it's, it's adding more violence to the country because we're already struggling actually to put everything in place. Um, so the country still the position for South Sudan to, 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 to address this issue of climate change. As I said earlier, we still need help other uh, nations to help us cope with this and adapt to climate change. The country is on, we are not having sufficient funds to address these issues because when thinking of people who have been displaced, they need shelters, they need food, already there is food insecurity, there is spread out of diseases, you know, water on disease, there is lack of, you know, clean water because with the, with the floods, already the water quality is reduced, there is lack of clean water for drinking and for other things. So that one put so much pressure on already devastated economy of this country to address and help with this situation. Um, I guess the thing is how to disaffect the women. What are you going to talk about this afternoon? Uh, how it is uh, this going to change between the women? But the, it's also All right. Uh, we know in every conflict, natural disasters, you know, um, the effect actually uh, they always affect many people. We have disabled people who have different effects. They are more vulnerable. And in this case, we also know that women are more vulnerable to climate change. When we see on our normal daily course or the households, women are more are the caregivers, the one who nurture the children, the one who care for homes. So when we have this fly, we have the effects on climate change. Women are more affected than men because they are left to be the one taking care of their families. In terms of droughts, women are left to go and look because they are actually depending on natural resources like water, firewood, and all this to actually care for their families. So in the course of them going to look for these scarce resources in times of uh, droughts, along the way you find women go through a lot of challenges. Some of them have been subjected to raping, some of them to violence, and also the distance that they walk, you cannot imagine it. Some of them fall victims of uh, wild animals like uh, lions and all this. They have been attacked. Some died on the way. Some have been attacked by reptiles like crocodiles and snakes. You know, and this one actually affect women more. And we see also on education, girls drop out of schools to help their mothers to look for these scarce resources, or else uh, during this season, also the economy of the family is. Use, which forces the families to marry off their girls at a very early age, that they're married off at least for the family to get some. It's also increased 
um, domestic violence, as we know, most of men, when they're broke, you know, they turn to, you know, if a woman comes and asks, he may end up beating her because he's actually already frustrated that he cannot get anywhere to go and get the resources. So women are more affected in climate change, and that's why uh, gender equality is needed. Women need to be empowered because they're the people who are directly dealing with the nature. When they're empowered, we will actually see there is a change. There is no climate sustainability or climate change address without empowering women. It will actually not be a reality. I don't know, Niamat, if you want to add something because you know better than me about this is climate change. I don't know if I'm missing something important that you would like to, to say. Uh, well, I don't think there's much. Climate change is a broad uh, topic and it's actually the pressing issue of our time. And you didn't miss anything, but what I want to say is that climate change is real and we are facing it, we are seeing it, and the situation is actually getting worse. And the, the responsibility is not only one person or one nation responsibility, whether poor or rich country, or developed or undeveloped, all of us are getting affected with the climate change. And if South Sudan is not in peace, South Sudan is being affected. That's why you're here today, because of the concerns. So the whole world is just like one village. And we all have to care for this climate, otherwise if we don't address it today, all of us will be doomed and we will disappear in place of the earth. Because of all these effects that we have seen, in the West we have seen you know, the recurrence of all these natural disasters, the tycoons, the, uh, you know, all of them, never, they never used to happen. Last year, we, we had three earthquake occurrence here, yeah, in which we, we don't really uh, experience that kind of thing. So we don't know what the future was for us. But the good thing is that if we all come together, we all do environmental education, climate change awareness, be in a position to solve this issue and maybe in the near future we reduce the temperatures by less than one by less than two percent.